Hey guys, welcome to Lauren.Live. I'm so excited because I have my first guest on the show today. And we're going to be talking about something really cool and really relevant uh, in in the current time, just with uh, kids being out of school in in many places and uh, some isolation taking place. And I just think this is a perfect time to have this phone call and have this guest on. You're going to be talking about art, kids, and giving back to the community. In the current state of our world, where there has been so much uncertainty, isolation, kids out of school, learning remote, there's never been a more important time for children to feel safe, happy, and creative. I wanted to feature a really special nonprofit called Give Kids Art. It's changing kids' lives one canvas at a time. Art is such an important form of expression, a chance to release, create, and also a very therapeutic activity for people all around the world. People may not be aware, but art programs have been cut from schools' curriculums over the years, and per Giving Kids Art's website, only 39% of California students are enrolled in arts education. That number is so, so low, and honestly, that breaks my heart. Give Kids Art is a 501c3 charity and was founded in 2019 by Kara Anton, our guest for today's podcast. She is a certified therapeutic art life coach and recently received her social emotional art certification through UCLA Arts and Healing. She has had a love for the arts and giving back to those in need for many years. Um, and, and Give Kids Art provides art programs to ignite creative exploration and self-expression in children living in LA. Their goal is to promote self-love, joy, and healing in an environment where anything feels possible. All right. So now that we got the little intro through, Kara is on the line with me. Kara, thank you so much for being here. Oh, thank you so much, Lauren. It's an honor to be on your show. I really appreciate it. Yes. I'm so excited. I've known Kara for a long time. We're actually related. (laughs) Cousins. (laughs) Yeah. The the Greeks have what, like 50 cousins in a family. So we're, Mm -hmm. what is it? Second cousins once removed or something like that. But I've known Kara for a long time and I've just seen her do some really cool things. And I'm so excited to, to feature her uh, nonprofit today. So let's, let's get to it. I have some questions for you. Sounds good. Cool. Can you tell us how you came up with the idea of starting Give Kids Art? Wow. Um, Well, I've always been passionate about the arts and um, have been immersed in the arts from a very young age. Uh, I actually remember falling in love with Pablo Picasso and and in general abstract expressionism around the age of five. And I was very fortunate to have parents that encouraged creativity at home and invested in my arts education. Um, I always had art books, brushes, and a rainbow of media within reach and would just paint on canvases almost three times my size. Uh, And as I got older, I enjoyed exploring all the creative arts. Um, You know, I'm just realizing this doesn't answer your question. (laughs) No, no, (laughs) it's good to get some background on you. So honestly, like I've said before in my podcast, we try not to be too scripted. This is down to earth. So it's good. That's a great background on you. And it makes sense why you would start something art focused because it was a passion of yours. So that's perfect. Yeah. I mean, it's, I've been pursuing arts, gosh, my whole life. Um, and it really has been therapeutic for me and kind of my natural form for communication and expression. And I'll tell you more about the story, but basically through a lot of research, soul searching, reflection, and of course, painting, I realized that my purpose in life is to help kids create fearlessly. Mm-hmm. Um, and my belief and reason for everything is really summarized by my favorite Pablo Picasso quote. It goes, every child is an artist. The problem is how to remain an artist once we grow up. Oh, I love that. Yeah. Yeah. That's really good. I know we lose a lot of our, our zest and uh, joy as we, we grow older, we get so serious and forget to take time to be creative. Yeah, and especially, I mean, children are really educated out of their creativity. Um, 
So my hope is to help them through Gift Kids Art hold on to their innate artistic selves, you know, exercise it, express it, and nurture it throughout their life. Oh, that's, that's amazing. Well, yeah. So, I mean, you were kind of influenced throughout your, your childhood into your adolescence and even adulthood with, with uh, art. And so you wanted to figure out a way to give back to the community. And that's when this kind of goes into my next question of just how was the organization birthed? Like, how did you finally put this thought or goal into reality, you know? Um, yeah, it's funny. I knew one day, I always had this idea that one day I would start a nonprofit. I just never thought it'd be so soon, and I always figured it'd be when I had money, <laughs> when I was older. Uh, so while I've always pursued my creative endeavors kind of throughout, throughout my professional life, I was at this point in my career where I wanted to figure out some way of incorporating the arts into my professional life. I had um, I'd been researching art therapy master's programs and thinking that that was maybe I need to make a change. And it's reading a lot on the topics of art as therapy, creative development, and social emotional learning. And was concurrently working on a for profit brick and mortar art concept. Uh, and during all this was working on certifications to help me kind of figure out if this was the area for me before I invested into say a master's program. Um and last but not least, simultaneously, all throughout this, I was volunteering and delivering art to children uh, about one to two times per week. And while doing this, was developing my own curriculum for the kids, trying to incorporate all these things I was reading about. And I had this moment. I think it was it was in the middle of 2019, actually. I, I, I think I, I recall sitting in the car. My fiance was driving. And I realized that I could not do it all. I always think I can, <laughs> but I can't. And I couldn't continue. Um, I, I just had this moment. I can't continue my professional marketing career. I can't and volunteering with kids and actually building out this new business venture in addition to all the other things I do. So I told myself I needed to make a choice. And when I was thinking about it, I just did not want to give up my time with the kids. So I figured, well, you know, never too early to start something you've always wanted to do. You know, it's now or never. And I went full steam ahead. I was like, oh, no profit, no problem. You know, I got this. And little did I know that uh, there was a ton of paperwork and legal requirements. Um, but I like a good challenge, and it ended up being the best decision I could have ever made. And not only because it's my passion and incredibly fulfilling, but it was also timely. Uh, we've been able to be there and support children and families through this entire pandemic with the healing benefits of the arts. And I'm so grateful that I'm here today and sharing our story and our mission with you. Wow. It all works out. Wow. Yeah. And I mean, like you said, perfect timing. It's almost like that was like a, I don't know, a spiritual thing or like it was meant to be or something. <laughs> like you said, just what an amazing time to get that started. I feel like kids will appreciate that even more during this crazy time. So that that is really neat about the timing aspect of it. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Um, cool. Tell us a little bit more about the charity and like how it's helping children around the LA. Like, what does it look like? You know, how do the kids find you and, you know, like what kind of stuff do you do? I guess just a little more details about how it all works. Sure. So as you mentioned earlier, we are a registered 501c3 nonprofit um, based in Santa Monica, California, and we provide a visual art program uh, that ignite creative exploration and self-expression in underserved children uh, living in Los Angeles. Well, and beyond, but I'll get to that later. Um, <laughs> in general, we run eight to 10 week after school programs through partner organizations like the Boys and Girls Clubs of America. Um, and right now we're working with children, uh, it's a huge range between the ages of five all the way to 16. And our programs are process art-based, meaning we focus on the process and joy of creating art and not on the final product or the idea of producing this beautiful work of art. Um, the process is the prize, essentially. And it is wonderful to learn, you know, just, I guess, sidebar here. It's wonderful to learn about art technique and rules in school if, if you're fortunate enough to have that. Um, however, at a young age, 
uh, especially between seven and 10 years old, we start to learn these concepts of right and wrong. And unfortunately, children get educated out of their creativity, which we kind of mentioned earlier. Um, So our goal is to provide a safe and nurturing space where children can explore their creativity and discover themselves through these various art modalities without external pressure or expectations or this idea of right or wrong. Um, So we give them the tools and the platforms to identify and communicate their feelings. Our sessions range 60 to 90 minutes weekly, and they typically include a fun interactive warm-up exercise and then the main art-making activity and then an opportunity to present and share. And at the end of the program, at least when we're on site, uh, we host an art gallery showcase event to celebrate the kids and the art that they created throughout our time together. Wow. That's really neat. Thanks. Yeah, it's fun. Yeah. I was actually about, I was thinking that, um, you know, I have some questions jotted down and we've been following a little, you know, our notes, but things come up as we're talking and that's what I want. And so I was actually thinking of asking this. And then when you mentioned that, do you, you have idea like goals of, um, making this, available for people outside of the LA area? Yeah. So, um, funny that you ask. So we recently, uh, expanded, well, we've expanded a few ways, but we recently expanded to Phoenix, Arizona, and we're running programming there at at a boys and girls club as we speak. So we've expanded outside of California. And we're also about to launch, uh, our wellness, a wellness workshop series is my stuttering, Mm -hmm. uh, with the organization Human Rights First, which um, helps refugee families and communities uh, nationwide, I believe. But we're working with uh, their branch in LA that serves uh, Southern California. And in addition, we've been, uh, we're planning right now, we just delivered a round of art kits to an organization in Fullerton, California um, called Project Access. And we're planning to do some programming with them starting in the summer. So while our focus is in L.A., um, we've really been starting to branch out to, throughout Southern California. And, and now we're in Phoenix. Mm-hmm. So we're getting there. One, one child at a time, making yes. a difference. Yeah, I mean, it's a lot of work. But that's really neat to hear about it. It's expanding. And who knows where it could go from here, right? I mean, that, yeah, that's really I hope, I hope it's everywhere. I know. It should be. It's, it's needed for sure. Um, well, congrats on that, by the way, the expansion. That's, that's really neat. Thank you. Yeah. Um, so how do the kids find find this charity? I mean, I know you say you're involved with the big you know, brother, big sister, which I've been involved with that. I've had a little sister actually for years. So I, I love that. <laughs> that uh, Aww. Yeah, I love them. But uh, how do they find you? I mean, they might find you through uh, partners like that. But otherwise, like how are kids finding you guys or are parents finding you? Yeah, so we currently, I mean, as of right now, we partner with organizations like the Boys and Girls Club of America and um, that work with underserved and underfunded children uh, in Los Angeles and beyond now. Um, And that's primarily how kids or parents uh, find us or come to work with us. Um, But however, if anyone's listening and you work with or volunteer for a nonprofit organization that supports underserved children and are interested in providing a program, please reach out. Um, And if you're a parent, you can go check out some of our art activities on our website at givekidsart.org and try them out. We also post our activities almost daily on our Instagram stories. So you can touch those out too. Yes, I can attest to I've been following your your (laughs) IG page and I love love seeing the art. It's so cool. So inspiring. (laughs) Oh, thanks. <laughs> That's cool. I was going to ask you too. Yeah, if you had stuff on your website, or if people could get ideas for doing stuff at home, if they they can't, you know, find you and either in person one day again, or even with the remote programs. And so, you know, maybe parents or adults that are um, working with kids, you know, they might run out of ideas. And so that's a nice way to become inspired. If you guys had some, you know, guidelines or ideas of what what kids could be doing at home. Yeah, for sure. And um, I was going to say, too, I mean, we have, like, I've had friends that are teachers and the, um, and a part of the L.A. Unified School District reach out and say, oh, I want to help bring this to kids after school. And so really, um, right now, we're just kind of growing organically. I think it helps to have a concentration of children, say, that 
to go to a Boys and Girls Club um, where we can provide that programming Mm -hmm. easily Mm -hmm. for them. Uh, And I just almost forgot what I was about to tell you. That's okay. But, But, oh, I was going to recommend for any parents listening, a great book uh, that I recommend is, it's by Erica Curtis. And let me... Hold on, I always forget the full name of it. It's called The Innovative Parent, Raising Connected, Happy, Successful Kids Through Art. It's online, it's on Amazon, it's a great book for learning how to communicate with your child through art and kind of encouraging that creative process for them. Okay, cool. Yeah, I'll uh, get that uh, book, I'll write it down and we'll actually link it. There's a detail section in the podcast uh, where we can link, oh, nice. link the books if it's on like Amazon or wherever that we make it ex- easy for people to find if they want to want to purchase it. All oh, right. Yeah. She was one of my, um, my teachers for my social emotional art certification through UCLA Arts and Healing. And she's just fabulous. Wow. Very cool. Cool. Yeah. We'll link that for sure. Um, okay. And then the, what kind of um, mediums are you guys working with? I mean, I see all the, like I said, the Instagram pictures of, you know, paintings on canvas. Do you guys mostly focus <laughs> on that or do you have other, other types of art you work on as well? Well, our program is really unique because we strategically outline a curriculum that introduces and allows each child to explore a multitude of visual arts mediums. So, um, such as collage, watercolor, acrylic paint, clay, drawing, and more. So they can experiment and kind of find their preferred creative channel. We also encourage curiosity and trying new things. So they might, you know, combine mediums for mixed media. Uh, and we incorporate different art modalities, such as theater and movement, into our warm up. Um, I'm trying to think of an example. Like, for instance, we might start uh, with a check in activity asking children to act out what kind of animal they would like to be based on their feelings right now. And then we might go into um, an art activity about, you know, what animal would you be or what something to that effect. I love it. It's kind of a, a way to release some feelings and confidence and, exactly. you know, movement, like you said. That's really cool. Mm-hmm. Nice. And so what happens to the art? I would assume kids get to take it home, but... Are there other places that the art can be showcased or, you know, do you sell any of it for, you know, fundraising for the the nonprofit? Well, typically when we operate our on-site programming, which we'll hopefully be doing soon, uh, we save the children's art throughout our 10 weeks together. If a child loves a piece and wants to take it home right after a session, they are more than welcome to do so. Um, And some children may not, you know, after each session, uh, they may not want their art. Uh, and sadly, I've even heard them say sometimes their parents don't want it at home, so they gift it to us. Either way, we keep the child's artwork, and at our last session together, again, when we're on site, we'll sit with each child and show them their artwork that they've created during uh, the course of the 10 weeks together and ask them which pieces they want to showcase in our art gallery event. So they get to pick, and then we surprise the kids with this this beautiful art gallery showcase um, where all the artwork they picked is displayed on easels and we have a fun party together. Uh, so any of the artwork that we end up keeping that's not claimed or taken home after the gallery event, um, we do not sell. I, I take it home and kind of put it in a safe place in case, you know, a child thinks about it and wants it again. Um, I've even framed a few pieces that were given to me as gifts oh. by the kids. But uh, yeah, one day I would love to figure out a way um, or some way to help the children, it would be nice for them to sell their artwork or with the permission of their parents, and then they could use the funds however they wanted for themselves or families or to donate. That would be nice. That would be cool. And I love the idea of the Mm -hmm. gallery too. That's fun. Like for them to pick it out and see it, it must be fun for them. Yeah, it is. But, you know, I think it really gives them a sense of, um, uh, what word am I thinking of? Accomplishment. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> no, self-esteem, self-esteem, I guess. Yeah. yeah. Accomplishment yeah. is a good one too. Yeah. To just be seen and noticed and totally. And, um, and it's really for them too, right? Like kind of the transformation maybe from the beginning to the end, maybe how it changed or. The art. Yeah. 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 For sure. That's really cool. 
Um, well, we kind of, you kind of touched on it. I mean, obviously with the pandemic, you've had to move to more of a virtual model, but I mean, when you were in person, like what do these events look like? Like how many kids were there? Were you in like a room just with different easels and like, what it just give us like a rundown of like what a visual, if you will, of what it looked like. Yeah. So our, our programming pre COVID, um, of course was on site. I'm going to just kind of run through as though it was out of boys and girls club partner location. So we would usually go into a room uh, for an hour, you know, every week with the kids. It'd probably be about 15 to 20 children. And uh, we would have, we would bring in this huge um, container of art supplies and bring it out before each session at each activity. Set it out for the kids and the kids would share all of their art supplies, um, of course. And then uh, we would do like fun interactive warm-up activities together that you know, would be <laughs> interactive, maybe some touching, uh, which seems weird now in a <laughs> post-COVID world. And then the biggest difference is that we had the ability as facilitators or, or mentors, as we like to call them, to walk around and engage one-on-one uh, with the children in conversations about their art, um, kind of question them and, you know, just get to know them a little more. We also had, um, we could surprise the children with snacks, you know, if it was like a special holiday or something fun. And of course, as you were asking about our art gallery event, so we would, uh, sometimes we would do it outside or maybe in the gym, like a larger room and set up tables with easels on them with all of their art. And we would throw on some music, have snacks and basically have a party with the kids. It was really fun way to end our 10 weeks together. Um, So, yes, in a post-COVID world, things are a lot different, Uh, which was really, it was a, um, well, I think it was a shock for everyone, but for us, we had technically been running, even though I had been doing this for a while with the kids, under the name of Give Kids Art, we had only run one cycle, one 10-week session, and then COVID hit, and we had to, we had to adjust. Um, So. In a post-COVID world, right now the way it works is we um, we build art kits for the kids, and these so, so art kits um, that are filled with individual supplies for them. And of course, that means it's it's kind of expensive for us because kids can't share supplies, of course, and um, maybe it's less diverse. We can't bring as many different things in. Um, but each child gets an art kit, and we're all virtual on Zoom. Uh, so it makes sometimes it can make our warm ups more difficult, uh, especially if there's technical or sound issues, which we experience a lot of time with the kids because they, you know, they might not have the best devices available, um, which affects the ability to share sometimes. Uh, and another thing is that um, a lot of our partners haven't had resources available. Um, because their budgets have been cut. So we've had larger kind of Zoom class sizes. I've been uh, working with up to, like, classrooms, I'll call them, of up to 30 children during COVID. And, of course, we have no art gallery events. So it is a very different world. Um, but we've been doing a lot of a lot of good, and the kids love, love, love it. Uh, it's the only time probably... I can't imagine they're getting art in school right now, and even if just because of the stats alone, but um, it's probably their only time to to get art uh, at home through school. Uh, and a lot of these kids, before we started doing the art kits, I found out j- didn't even have a paper and pen at home to create oh, with. Wow. And I think since we've shut down, since we like shut down the, the on-site programming, um, which was March 16th, 2020, a little over a year ago, uh, we've delivered over 700 art kits to 700 kids in need, um, in addition to providing our virtual programming. And each art kit supplies one kid with a minimum of, like, I really like to say 40 creations because we at least give them 40 pieces of paper plus construction paper plus, you know, canvas panels plus everything else. Um, 
So it's enough for 10 weeks of creativity. And that's 28,000 pieces of artwork that we've delivered during COVID. Oh my gosh. So, that is that's a lot. So <laughs> lot. That is amazing. Yeah. I mean, oh, that's awesome. <laughs> I have like goosebumps because it's been such a hard time. And to hear how charities and companies and people have been so creative doing things remotely and, and bringing joy to people, you know, still amongst the hard times. Like that's just so cool that you guys have delivered that, that much happiness and art supplies and more, you know what I mean? It's not just the supplies, like it's providing joy for these kids. And I don't know. I just, that's really, really cool. Oh, thanks. Yeah. It's, it is. I mean, it got, the supplies helped because at first I was like, oh my gosh, all these organizations are providing, you know, they everyone transferred to virtual very quickly in terms of programming. Um, but yeah, they, the supplies was an issue at first, but then I've, I've just noticed that they weren't getting the programming they needed, um, at least the communities that we serve. So it's, it's really been a, an opportunity for them to be seen, to be free, to be creative. Um, each week through this time and, and for them to heal or work through their emotions. Oh, I love it. Um, well, what have you learned from working with kids in an art setting? I know you said you only had (laughs) like one full cycle, but I'm sure you learned from that. And then also just even virtually, you're probably learning a lot too, just through these times, but in a nutshell, just like, what have you learned so far? Yeah. I mean, as of right now, even though it wasn't under a officially under Give Kids Art. I've been doing this on site and virtually for at least um God, I wanna say two years. Um but I would say what I've really learned uh is that every child is an artist. They are so naturally creative and observant and their depth is awe inspiring. Um you know, working at, Working with children and practicing, I, I, our program practices this more trauma-informed kind of open communication style that promotes sharing, expressing, and critical thinking, um, which has allowed me to see this. I recall one session on site uh, where a child's artwork just blew me away. I can't recall the exact activity we were doing. I know we were painting with acrylic on canvas board, but at the end, I asked this little boy about his artwork. You know, tell me about your art. And it was an abstract piece. And he told me that one part of his painting represented good and the other part um, represented evil. And when I asked him, I said, what, so what is the title of your artwork? He said, The Great Mystery. Oh. And uh, I still have it. He was only, I want to say, eight or ten years old. So it was really powerful for me to kind of see his death and he gosh he was he's just surprising the whole time we were together um but through working with kids I feel that I've also noticed and really seen up front the effects of our current educational system and how really limiting and stifling children's creativity um lots of times when I start programming like in the first few sessions, the kids will ask a lot of questions about what they can or can't do. And I, of course, I, in, I introduce saying, you know, hi, I'm Kara. I'm here with the Art. And when you're here with me, there's no right or wrong way of making art. We're, you know, we're here to think outside the box, to try new things, to be curious and have fun. So I, I say all this to them, but they still are, you know, at the very beginning. So can I do it like this? Can I can I use any color? Can I can I paint more than one? Um, they're really excited to try new things. Uh, so I don't know. If for us, we create this safe space full of acceptance, and over time, you see the kids grow and understand that and feel more comfortable exploring their curiosity and trying new things. But you can tell that in school, they probably learned that there is a right or wrong way to to do something or to draw an animal or whatever it may be. Um, one of my idols is Sir Ken Robinson. He's a renowned expert in this area of creativity and educational reform. Uh, he actually sadly passed away this last year in 2020. Um, 
But he has some well-known TED Talks on the topic that I recommend watching, and his books are fabulous. Uh, so I would check that out. I, at the end of the day, he essentially is talking about how children get educated out of creativity. And they are a future. So we need them to be able to think divergently and to be problem solvers and to be creative. Yeah, I agree. That's the thing too. Yeah, I was kind of, when I was listening along, a lot, there are probably some, you know, art teachers or programs where they're like, okay, free for all, like just create something. But a lot of assignments in school from young to old, right, through high school or even obviously college, there's a structure to it, right? You have to include this, you have to do this, which is good for like learning certain things, but there's not a lot of time to just create on your own, like you said, with no rules, think outside the box. And so if anything, that's huge. That's a huge thing to take away from this program is encourage them when they're at home, they can just free draw, right? Just anything you want to do. And that, that in itself, I think maybe, like you said, like kids are not used to just being able to do what they want. And it's not just art. It's like, as they get older, like you said, to be able to think creatively and come up with things and it could, you could apply that to any sector that you're working in. Um, I think maybe sometimes people don't realize like when that low statistic I read about the, I think it was a 39% um, in schools, art programs. It's like, it's not just painting on a, on a piece of paper. It's so much more than that's how your brain, your brain is able to express itself and confidence, like you said. And I just think people don't always realize how important art is. It's not just the physical crayon or paintbrush, whatever the medium is on a piece of paper. It's so much more your brain, the brains are being developed and working and that could go with you, you know, through your life. I'm not saying it well, but I think you, you catch what I'm, my drift, right? Like, Oh yeah. I mean, it's, it, it really is. Art is a, a vehicle and it could, and it could be any form, of course, any form of art, whether it's visual arts, performing arts, um, music, um, it's a vehicle through which not only the, God, there's so many benefits, uh, through which that you can express yourself and kind of communicate and, and that in and of itself builds self-awareness, you know, self-love, all these beautiful qualities, but it's also, um, a vehicle through which you can explore your imagination mm-hmm. and uh, kind of develop that divergent thinking that is that helps with creativity and problem solving and mm-hmm. all the things that we need later on in our careers. I think um, I was just hold on. I was just looking at it. It was there was a stat. You know, I love as a resource, especially for those of you that live in uh, California. CreateCalifornia.org. It's a um, a coalition that promotes uh, the arts and is kind of fighting for arts education within uh, the California school system. And they have a lot of great stats on their website, but uh, one was that 72% of business leaders say that creativity is the number one skill they're currently seeking. Um, So any way that we can promote it, and of course, through our programming, we, you know, we have uh, a curriculum and a guide. So, but, we use art also to promote all of these social and emotional kind of learning benefits. So like a great activity um, where a child, this is an example of where a child could explore different things is to, um, I love this one where we talk about feelings and uh, and we have a fun warm up activity, maybe a charade based one where they communicate their feelings and kids mimic. Mimicking is a great way to build empathy. Um, but the main art activity is, okay, so let's talk about, uh, it's called my, uh, friend, my monster. I think it's up on our website. And, uh, we talk about how we all have our monsters, you know, our happy monster, our angry monster, our sad monster, <laughs> every, every type of monster is in us. So I ask the kids, like, let's think of a monster that you don't like ha- having. What does that monster look like? You know, what color is it? What texture? Is it big? Is it little? Does it make a sound? And let's draw your monster, your monster buddy. And and then at the end, I ask, you know, what does your monster need? Does it, you know, if it's your sad monster, maybe does it need a hug? Does it need a cookie? <laughs> so they draw 
good as it's guided, but it's they can be as creative with it as they want, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I love it. And I, one of my questions was kind of, we've, you've kind of answered it, but how, how does art affect development and emotions? And you've kind of touched on that already, but I, I just, I think it's, when you really think about it, art, I mean, think about some of the first things that we did before we could write as kids, every, everyone, right? You, if you have the access to it, paper and a pen or pencil or whatever you're at home, you drew before you write, you could draw, right? And so I just, I don't know. And it's not just drawing. Like you said, you could be dancing or acting or doing other things, but it's a huge part of our, our de de developmental process growing. And I don't know. I just keep stressing that because I think a lot of people don't realize like that's why that statistic just keep, I keep bringing it up. It's just so upsetting that schools are, are cutting these programs. We need more creative outlets, hence why I'm featuring Give Kids Art on the <laughs> podcast. But we need it more at home and we need it more at school. Like how does, you know, like we've talked we about just confidence and creativity. There's so many aspects, of release and expression. So, I mean, uh, yeah. It, yeah, it's endless. There's one, um, there's one study, I, and there's so much to on this, there's, but there is one study I remember that uh, – kind of surprised me um, when I was initially thinking about uh, developing Give Kids Art. And it was, it's a NASA study um, that found that out of, I think it's 1,600, it was a decent size, four and five-year-olds, that 98% scored at creative genius level. And they followed these children throughout their life, or at least until they got older, and they noticed that five years later, only 30% of the same group of children scored at the same level. And then again, five years later, only 12%. So by the time I think we were adults, only 2% scored at the genius level. Mm -hmm. So it's just showing how we're kind of drained of our creativity, mm -hmm. likely through our education system as we get older. Um, but also it's something that you can practice. And to your point, uh, like there's, uh, I was just reading too, Studies have shown that 45 minutes of creativity significantly lessens stress in our body, you know, lower, lower cortisol levels. Um, and from like a social emotional wellness standpoint, the arts are starting to be appreciated at even top medical schools. Like mm -hmm. Harvard and Yale have started launching initiatives to include the arts to help medical students become more empathetic. That's cool. And reflective doctors. Yeah. Love it's that. very cool. And it, and I think they've even seen that the arts have been um, helping people with dementia hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. uh, it's really big in kind of helping that brain plasticity. Yeah, that's true. I mean, well, I guess it's not just about kids. I mean, it's good to get that, yeah. that in, <laughs> in young, right? And hopefully they'll take it with them their whole life. But I mean, it's proving exactly. a point that anyone at any time in their life should be maybe incorporating more creative outlets and you know, any, any form of art expression that you can get in seems like it could be helping, helping your brain and your stress levels go down. Yeah. Yeah. I know they have those adult coloring books. That was kind of a, a trend that hit in the last couple of years. <laughs> for sure. Yeah. yeah. I mean, anything that is really for children or adults, uh, repetitive when it comes to art making, um, it is, it's meditative. So it's right. relaxing, right? Mm -hmm. Definitely. Um, I was going to ask you something. Oh, I guess, like, I know you're not working in, in the school or in the education system per se, but like, what do we do to get more of these programs back in schools? Do you, do you have like any thoughts on that? I mean, I know we can write to our politicians and I, I don't know. I mean, do you have any like ideas on that or? Well, it's, oh, it's so hard. I mean, to my knowledge, it's been an issue in California for a while. I think even back to like the late 70s when when Prop 13 cut local tax, tax revenues for public schools um, that eliminated our programs. I'm sure in every state, too, has had its issues. But uh, at least in California, you know, clearly schools are still struggling. Um, even, and I don't know if you knew this, but in the state of California, it's actually required in the California Education Code as of 2000 to include visual and performing arts mm -hmm. in elementary education. But only, I think, 12% of schools are in compliance. Mm -hmm. It's insane. Yeah. Um, of course, to your point, it's 
primarily they don't have the budget. But um, usually what it comes down to, right? Like supplies and yeah. stuff like that. Yeah. Okay. I know. I mean, it's not my area of expertise. Of course, it has to do with figuring out the budget. But I, you know, quickly thinking outside of the box, I would say maybe. I mean, is there opportunity to provide teachers with training for delivering more social emotional learning using the arts in their classrooms? Um, which that that might be helpful not only for promoting emotional development and intelligence, but like opportunities for process based creativity. Yeah. That's, so that could be an option. Um, that's a good point. Yeah. I mean, we, of course, as you said, first step is, you know, pledging and change and joining the movement to create change in the system. Um, and second step, uh, until things can be changed at an institutional level, I feel that the best alternative option is augmenting arts in school with free accessible programs um, like Give Kids Art. Mm -hmm. Definitely. And, it, you know, again, it doesn't have to be visual arts. It could be theater, improv, dance, whatever. Mm -hmm. um, but exposing children to various modalities, you know, Definitely. would be wonderful. And encouraging, wow. you know, just encouraging parents and, and siblings that are, sorry, older siblings in the home or whoever, caretakers to encourage yeah. to do this at home, right? I mean, a lot of it starts at home. You can only teach someone so much in a, in a class or a school. And I think we should, that For goes, sure. you know, with any subject, just if you can implement things at home or outside of school with programs like Give Kids Art or whatever. Yeah. I mean, a parent, if you're, if we're, the parents can help out and the children are fortunate enough to have parents that can do that. Uh, I would say make invitational creative spaces in your home, just like, you know, markers, coloring pencils, crayons, whatever you can get. And honestly, it doesn't need to be expensive. I know sometimes it seems like, oh, and art supplies can be very expensive, but the Dollar Tree is my, my favorite place. <laughs> it provides absolutely fabulous supplies for sure. kids. Yeah, um, and even getting, you know, uh, I mean, there's so many things that you can do. I know it's an extra step to look it up, but hopefully our website provides some some ideas. But even giving the child salt with their watercolors and they can experiment with salt watercolor paintings or, you know, yeah. very affordable things they can do. That's really cool. Or going out in nature. I remember we had a couple of those like, projects yeah, in school. Exactly. Going out and collecting like <laughs> pine cones and dried flowers and you could, you know, make a collage. Like I'm trying to think now, what am I going to do with my daughter one day? Like what can you use in your yard mm -hmm. or at home and get creative, right? We all did those, gl glue the macaroni to a piece of paper and make it, you know what I mean? Like you just. Oh, for sure. And especially with the COVID and all our deliveries, I mean, I'm sure everyone has so many cardboard boxes or really? toilet paper rolls or whatever, keeping those because the kids can I mean, they can use them as canvas. They can, um, they can make forts out of yeah. them. You know, totally. Yeah, there's creative ways and cheap ways to do this. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, and then, I mean, we could we could keep talking about all this kind of stuff. I love it. But <laughs> how can people help? your, you know, giving kids art. I mean, obviously, they can go to your page. I'm sure there's a place to donate and sharing your. Instagram page, like what are some ways that people can find out more about you and, uh, and helping, helping you guys continue to grow and expand? Yeah. Uh, yeah. You can go to our website, givekidsart.org. Um, follow us on Instagram at givekidsart. We, um, as I said, we post there the most, uh, but all the information is really on our website, uh, a link to donate, um, more information if you are, you know, or work with a nonprofit that's looking to partner, you can find out things there. And if you're looking to get involved, you know, we're really growing fast and need help in any state. You don't have to be in California. You can help from any state and help ex us expand and grow. Mm -hmm. As long as you're passionate about the arts and igniting creativity in children, please reach out. We would love help across any area from like accounting to marketing to art kit making to fundraising. Um, you could even bring Give Kids Art to your local community. Um, so share your strengths, help us grow. That's, yeah. that's a great way. You, I was going to ask you about that. Just like partners and 
or just people that want to volunteer and do something like I was wondering, is that something that, you know, if someone, if I, we wanted to bring it to like Washington or where, where I live, right? Like, can people just contact you and you guys be open to starting it in other places if there's people that are willing to help? Yes. Okay. More, yes. Very open to um, bringing Give Kids Art to any community across the country. Um, so just reach out. No question. No, <laughs> no idea is uh, like we embrace it all. I love it. And we will, if you're eager to do that and help us grow, we sure. will, we will do it. Yeah. So okay, well, if anyone, we would love that. Anyone listening has, <laughs> you know, has been looking for something to give back, a way to give back, wants to volunteer, loves art themselves, you know, get in touch with Give Kids Art. Uh, I'd be really cool to see it expand even further. I'm a big, yeah, and yeah, big fan of it. Thanks, Lauren. And of course, you know, you can always give the gift of art to a child in need for just ten dollars. Um, you can give a child an art kit full of art supplies mm-hmm. uh, that will last them for at least ten weeks. Um, so you can donate at, again at givekidsart.org, or you can text "Give Kids Art" to four four dash three two one for more information. Um, And I'll leave you with this too. You know, there's a lot of, there are so many nonprofits out there that are doing good and, um, and and even bringing art to children. Uh, So wherever you want to donate, I I encourage it or or volunteer, I encourage it wholeheartedly. Um, I just like to always tell people that when you donate through us, 100% goes to funding the art supplies used for art kits or the art supplies used for on-site programming. So it really does make yeah. its way to the children and makes a huge difference. Yeah, that's good to know. I know sometimes these days, yeah, you just never know where your donations are going. So it's good mm-hmm. to clarify that. Yeah. And I mean, like to your point, yeah, if you don't have time to volunteer or, or you know, take it on into a new state, donations, yeah. obviously, if you if you can give 10 bucks or whatever you can give, that's a great way to, of course, the supplies. That's number one, right? Just getting supplies into kids' hands. So, yeah, totally. It's huge. <laughs> yeah. Very cool. Oh, well, I love it. Um, I wanted to close out. I, I was looking at your website before we we decided to do this, and I loved your values. I just want to read these out loud. I just yeah. think that they're really um, motivating and, uh, yeah, so – Embrace beautiful mistakes, inspire imagination, live with heart, nurture trust, and go beyond. I love those. I mean, I think just in any oh. any facet of life, right? Like those are great little values to, <laughs> to remember, but just even now more than ever, it's just been a hard year, year plus, year plus, if you will, and, and for yeah. many reasons, politically and pandemic and just economically for a lot of people. And even before that, you know, a lot of the kids that you're working with, like you said, not even having a pencil or paper at home. I mean, gosh, a lot of people can't imagine that. And I don't know, it's just like open your eyes to, to what, what people are going through. And I don't know. I just, I love those values. And I think we all do. We need to live with heart and we need creativity more than ever. (laughs) (laughs) We do. That is for sure. Yes, definitely. Well, I can't thank you enough for taking the time to speak with me. And I hope that this is some good publicity, giving his art. I'm all about supporting it. And I just, if anyone's listening, again, in the description of the podcast on any of the platforms, YouTube, Apple, wherever you are listening, we will list um, the website, you know, Give Kids Art website in case you want to get involved or just check it out or donate. And then also um, I'll get that uh book name again from you, Kara. We'll put that in there in case anyone's interested in checking that out. Oh, great. Thank you so much, Lauren. This has been an absolute pleasure. And I'm just so grateful that you've allowed us to share our story and our mission. Absolutely. Uh, Good luck with everything, with the expansion. And I wish you guys the absolute best. Just keep doing what you're doing. I know you're changing kids' lives and it's, it's really cool to see. One canvas at a time. I know. <laughs> Thank keep you. Keep art alive. <laughs> hashtag hashtag yep. keep art alive. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I love thanks, Lauren. Yeah, take care. Okay. You too. Thank you guys so much for listening. I hope you enjoyed the first 
guest on Lauren.live. We have many more guests lined up in the coming weeks, uh, but this was a fun one to start off with. Um, you can find more about Lauren.live on my website, obviously, Lauren.live, and you can find me on IG at Real Lauren Live. Uh, again, check out the notes if you're interested in finding out more about Give Kids Art. Take care, everybody. Be well.